Hello, everybody. Uh, good morning. I'm really happy and really excited to be here with you. Uh, thanks for joining. My name is Emil, and my job for today is to get you familiar with the pro native script uh, product roadmap. Uh, I have a lot to talk about, so let's get it started. A little bit about me. I work as a product manager in progress, and I'm entirely focused on native script as an open source product. Uh, I do some fun stuff in my free time. That's uh, me breaking the sweat. And if you wonder why a snowboarder is wearing skis, ask me after the talk. I'll be happy to explain. Several very easy ways to get in touch with me. Uh, so let's get to the point. Before talking to the, before deep diving into the roadmap itself, I would like to talk a little bit about how we actually came up with it and what's the process there. So you can think of our roadmap as consisting of three types of work, uh, or three buckets, if you will. The first bucket, let's call it the maintenance one. Uh, the work there generally comes from the team, and there you can see things like the V8 upgrade, the JS core upgrade, support for the latest bits of Angular and stuff like this. And this is really important type of work because we would like native script to step on the latest uh, bits of its technology stack which brings a lot of improvements uh, for you as users, but also for the team as uh, maintainers of the product. We also have another important uh, bucket with work, which uh, comes from the industry that we all operate in, and that's the mobile industry. It's really dynamic, new things pop up every day. And here we have things like AR, VR, safe air support, which came out with Typhoon uh, X, and it was a huge effort on our side to provide great experience with it and more things that I'll talk about a little bit later. And uh, finally, the most important and the biggest bucket is uh, the type of work that comes from you, the things that you'd like to see in the framework. And uh, you usually say that you'd like a fast and reliable development, you like a way to test your applications, you wanted a Vue.js integration and an Angular integration before that. And uh, we do a lot of things in order to gather your feedback. Uh, one thing is that we regularly triage all the GitHub, GitHub issues that you open. Uh, another thing is that we do regularly customer interviews with uh, strategic partners and users of the framework. And we also do community service, which uh, I will talk a little bit more at the end of this talk. So we bring all this work uh, in one place. We gather all the engineering leads, uh, the dev route team, even the marketing guy. And we try to find the best place in this matrix for every item. As you can see, we have one access for effort, one access for value, and uh, we hold the discussion for every single item too in order to write the right place. It took days. And that's uh, the actual blackboard with all the sticky notes. Uh, after we are done, we are naturally focusing on the things that are high value, low effort, and after that, we expand to the other two quadrants. And the things that are low value and uh, high effort are generally left to the next iteration of prioritization. So the last time we did this was in November, and you can say that we are already have the way to our roadmap for this year. So let's look at how it looks like. We have two scheduled releases already, uh, one for May, one mid-July, and we'll probably have three more by the end of the year. As you know, we schedule a minor release every six or seven uh, weeks, and a major release might take a little bit longer, like two months. For the next release, it's going to be a minor one, 5.4, a lot of excited things there. The first I would like to talk about is Webpack by default. Uh, Webpack brings a lot of improvements in the development experience. It also brings a lot of improvements in the runtime of the application. You get smaller app, faster apps. Uh, you get uh, hot model replacement out of it, which is really nice thing. You have, if you haven't tried, please try it. And we would like this to be the default experience for everyone. So with this release, uh, we are going to switch the development workflow to use Webpack. Uh, the, next things, uh, the next thing is font icon support. Font icons is something that web developers uh, love and would like to use uh, everywhere. Currently, you can use font icons in many places in your native script app, but on some special places like the tab view, the action bar, some other components, it, it, was, it was not possible. With this release, we, will, we want to enable this as well and uh, to allow it to, enable, to implement your design uh, requirements uh, really faster. We are also planning a lot of improvements in the tab view components. We, will, we want to make it uh, easier for use, more customizable, and in general to empower you to achieve your design requirements without making too much customization uh, or custom ports. 
And uh, the last but not least is the new template that we are working on uh, for Vue.js. It's going to be based on side drawer, and this is our continuation of, of the effort to provide parity between Angular and Vue.js. The next release is going to be a major one, 6.0, and it's a major one because it comes with some breaking changes. I would like to talk first about the Android Tech support. Uh, as you probably heard, Android Text is the new incarnation of the support library for Android, and uh, it's a breaking change for the Android Tech system, actually, so it's naturally a breaking system in NativeScript. The way it works, it's going to work for NativeScript is that with 6.0, every application that is using the support library, we have to use the Android text uh, library, actually, and the same applies for the plugins. Uh, we are already in touch with all the plugin authors, uh, the biggest plugin authors, and uh, we are providing guidance and instructions how to uh, do the transition. It's pretty, uh, pretty trivial. We have a lot of time, so I'm sure that this would be a smooth sell. And uh, yeah, but that's really important because moving forward, all the new fixes and improvements in, in Android support where we will come as part of Android X. So we want to enable it. Next thing is Webpack only development, and this is our, at the end of the journey, to make Webpack a first class citizen. Uh, with 6.0, the only way to develop apps will be with Webpack. So if you have any current issues, it's really important to uh, open an issue in GitHub and let us know so that we can take a look and fix them. Uh, on time. Next big thing is Angular Ivy support. Really exciting. Angular Ivy is the new renderer that the Angular team is working on. Uh, it comes with a lot of improvements in terms of speed. It would be much more tree shakeable, which means more apps for if you're not using parts of the Angular framework. Uh, and uh, yeah, in general, we are looking to some improvements in the garbage collector as well, because Angular Ivy will have much uh, lower footprint. Uh, in terms of object graph and uh, stuff like this. So we are in touch with the Angular team and working together in order to bring support in native script. We would like to do it as soon as possible. Uh, it's not entirely in our hands, so I hope by 6.0 we have some, uh, something good to try. And the uh, last thing, but uh, it's equally important, is the Apple Watch integration. With the previous release, uh, you might notice that we provided suppo support for iOS app extensions. IOS app extensions are the iOS way to provide uh, enhanced functionality for your application, like the today integration with the today screen in your iPhone, or uh, integration with the sharing uh, widget, which is integrated in many places uh, in, your, uh, in the operating system. The next steps in this journey is to provide to an integration with Apple Watch as well, which means that your application will be able to interact with uh, wearables for iOS. This, oh, most of these things are already in progress, so we have pretty good confidence that we are going to deliver on them. And the rest of the, half, uh, of the roadmap for the, uh, the second half of the year is uh, still in progress and to be decided, but we have some exciting things there as well. As I said, three minor releases. Um, one of the hot topics there is Foldable support. As you know, Foldable is a really trendy topic lately. Samsung is going to release a device this month. Uh, Huawei and Lenovo are also teasing with new devices, which will be foldable, and the rumors are that Apple will also jump on this ship. So it's a little bit early to talk about this, but as soon as there are some weird real devices that we can work with, uh, we will evaluate the readiness of the framework to work with foldable devices, and we will do what is needed in order to provide great experience with this emerging type of phones. Next thing is uh, the CSS support, That's one of the pillars of our framework. We would like to strengthen this by providing uh, better integration with Chrome DevTools. We would like to enable you to see your real style sheets and interact with them while you're debugging your applications. We are planning more uh, property support like box shadow and stuff like this. And we are also evaluating a new CSS parser, which we hope will bring some uh, improvements in the, in the speed and some new features in the CSS support like CSS variables. So cool stuff. Another thing we are currently investigating is a uh, live patching mechanism. Uh, we know that sometimes it's really tedious job to push a little fix through the tedious proce process that public stores has, so we would like to, s to provide you a way in order to push uh, such little changes faster and without the need to go through the official process. 
And uh, the last thing that I'm really pretty excited is the material design support. I'm really happy to say that it started as a community effort. One of, one of our contributors, Martin Giwan, uh, prepared a set of 12 com components that implement material design. And currently, we are working together with him in order to see how this fits holistically into the framework, uh, how it um, relates to all kinds of aspects like teaming, routing, uh, navigation, animation, and stuff like this. Uh, I hope that by the end of the year we will have a really strong story about material design, but currently if you need such uh, components, they are already published and uh, you can use it. Martin is actually using it in his apps. So, pretty much that, that's, the, that's our plan. Of course, it's subject to change, things ch uh, constantly changing, so take it with a grain of salt, but that's our current thinking. And at this point you might be wondering what you can do about it and how you can participate in all this. Uh, as I said, we are doing a community service twice, uh, twice a year, one in the autumn, one in the spring. The spring edition is now open, and this is the most easy and direct way to influence our roadmap. More, more than half of the work that we are currently working on is coming from the previous edition of the community survey, so I can assure that this would be 10 minutes well, very well spent on your side, and we take this uh, really seriously. So. Uh, I don't think I have time for questions, but if you, if you have one, feel free to stop by and uh, I'll be around the whole day. I'll be happy to discuss anything. And yeah, thank you. Cool.